As the third test for the Book of Mormon, let's use the test of inspiration. Okay. If the Book of Mormon is congruent with the Bible, the words of the Book of Mormon should only confirm what the Bible says, not go against it. Would you agree? I suppose. As an example, the Bible teaches in Matthew 2, 1, that Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea. In the Book of Mormon, Alma 7.10 prophesied about 83 B.C. that Christ would be born at Jerusalem. Aren't Bethlehem and Jerusalem close to each other? Yes, but the Bible prophets knew the difference. Bible prophecies are always accurate, not close. Concerning Jesus' time on the cross, the Bible says in Mark 15.33 that there was three hours of darkness. In the book of Helaman 14.20, Samuel the Lamanite prophesied that the earth would be dark the entire time Jesus was dead. That's three days, not three hours. 3 Nephi 8.33 records that these three days of darkness supposedly happened around 33 AD, while people living on the other side of the world experienced only three hours of darkness. I have to admit, that always seemed confusing to me. Another clear contradiction is on Melchizedek's priesthood. The Bible in Hebrews 7.3 teaches that Melchizedek reigned without father, without mother, without genealogy. On the contrary, the Book of Mormon in Alma 13.18 claims Melchizedek did reign under his father. That's interesting. More significantly, the Book of Mormon is not concerned with accuracy representing the Law of Moses. How so? According to Numbers 3, 6-7, only those from the tribe of Levi were permitted to serve in the Aaronic priesthood. However, the Book of Mormon claims in Alma 10, 3 that those who descended from Manasseh offered sacrifice and burnt offerings according to the Law of Moses. This is just a sample of the contradictions the Book of Mormon makes with the Bible. With so many contradictions, we have to conclude that either the author of these two books was not perfect, or the one true God is not the author of both books. As far as inspiration goes, Joseph Smith said the Book of Mormon is the most correct of any book on earth. Elders, I understand that that is what you have to teach in order to be obedient missionaries, but would you please read 2 Timothy three sixteen through 17 All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto good works. As far as the inspiration goes, the Book of Mormon fails the test to measure up to scripture. Therefore, it should not be used for teaching, reproof, correction, training in righteousness, or any good work. When one reads the Bible, he or she begins to understand the character of a perfect loving God. The evidence confirms that the only explanation of the Bible is that it must have come from a truly good, perfect, and inspiring God. We think you can get the same feeling about God when reading the Book of Mormon. Before Christ ascended back to heaven, he commissioned his apostles to go everywhere preaching the gospel. They did, and they paid for it with their lives. This is a testament to the Bible's authenticity. These men who witnessed the life, miracles, death, and resurrection of Christ were willing to preach about him, even when it meant they would lose their lives. Under threat of execution, not a single witness of Christ was willing to renounce him. The Book of Mormon had three witnesses who signed their name claiming to have heard the voice of God, seen an angel, and even saw the gold plates. And before their deaths, all three of them, Oliver Cowdery, David Whitmer, and Martin Harris, renounced Mormonism and were condemned as reprobates by the Mormon church. Remember what it says in Hebrews 11.1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Shouldn't that cause you to be concerned about a book that is destroyed by the evidence?